whatever we expect, if we endure it, we will experience it. But sometimes we have expectation, but we cannot endure. And the experience will be there, either negative or positive. So what kind of experience we will have based upon our expectation is dependent upon whether we will endure through tough times in life or not. So let us read the story from Luke's Gospel, chapter 1. Luke's chapter 1, verse 5 to 25. It's a long story, but I'm just going to read through as I share a few thoughts from my heart. Luke is a gospel written to a very prominent person at that time. He was addressed as a Theophilus. Theophilus could be a name or an adjective of a person. Theom is God, philos means lover, lover of God. This is a gospel written to a person whose name means the lover of God. And this person must have been a high-ranking officer because in those days, when people write books, they address to a particular person or an emperor or a ruler or a friend. So Theophilus was a lover of God. But then Luke says in verse 1 to 4, I want you to be certain of the things you have heard, beloved Theophilus. And then he starts the story like this. Verse 5, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the priestly division of Abijah. He had a wife of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. They were both righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and they both were well advanced in years. Luke is giving us the real historical life settings of the gospel that we have come to believe today. Christian message is not a man's imagination. Someone did not decide to write this religious uh, poetry or kind of a saga. This was a product of a life setting just like you and I. It was a historical situation in which there is a king. When he says, in the days of Herod, the king of Judea. Uh, nowadays, it is known as Palestine. But the, during the Roman time, it was the land of Israel was known as Judea. The king of Judea was not a Jew at that time. He was a kind of an Edomian mixed person. Her mother was Jewish, but father was not. So it was a heathen man ruling over Jewish kingdom of Judea. He gave them a very powerful, beautiful temple where these priests and Levites and uh, uh, temple workers were busy all the time performing their duties. Many, many years had gone by. and They were simply following the traditions that they were handed. The temple was built or rebuilt or modified by a hidden king who didn't care about the Jewish laws. But yet, this couple comes in a very uh, important stage in the Jewish life. Certain priest, uh, you know, is not very prominent. Somewhere in the countryside of Judea, not in Jerusalem. They were not living in Jerusalem. He was living in certain mountain villages. But certain priest, Zechariah, uh, was chosen for a particular time to do certain things. So they were righteous and blameless. There are two things that mark the certain nameless, I mean, uh, unrecognizable priest. In those days, to go to a temple to perform certain religious ceremonies also, you have to wait. There were many, many divisions of priests at that time. There were no guarantee you will be chosen. But yet this couple, Zechariah and Elizabeth, both, not only husband. You see, the, many times people accuse the Bible being very misogynistic and anti-woman and all these things. But from the beginning, 
right from the beginning god created man in his image he made them male and female in his own image god has never rejected man and woman in a separate distinction they always go together the image of god is together in male and female so here also uh, they both were verse 6 righteous before god and walking blameless in all the commandments and ordinances of the lord but then there is a but verse 7 but this is a priest and he has a wife they were righteous blameless but there is a big but in a general understanding if you're a godly person if you're a righteous person if you're a good person you will be blessed by god god will answer your prayers uh, you even barrenness is even in today's society in hindu society we have a very negative image of a lady who cannot bear children husband will abandon or he will go and marry again it was worst in those days it was directly thought to be cursed from god if you are a barren somehow god has cursed you but this is a paradox here they were righteous they were blameless but they had no child because they are two again elizabeth was barren number one now they were old that's when i say expectation endurance and experience this is a couple maybe in their 60s or 70s we don't know when the bible says they were well in advanced it is generally old days but they had expectations definitely they were praying for a child they had been praying maybe they were praying in their 20s or maybe they married before 30 in their 30s and 40s maybe then by 50s of course naturally they realize is no chance now after the menopause there was no way that uh, they knew it is not possible maybe they had stopped praying now the expectation was there but their prime years of having child is they have gone 30s and 40s and even maybe they were hoping in the 50s it's gone now but even though they may have stopped praying and expecting god to do something miraculous for a long time they never fell short of obedience to the commandments of god they were righteous they were blameless they never sinned in other word they never uh, wavered from the path that they were supposed to walk you know many times christians they come to church for certain expectations they want to be healed or they want to get a job or they want to get married or some kind of expectations are always there as humans so they come to church and they pray and they ask prayer and after some time their expectations are gone they are not fulfilled they are disappointed and they stop coming to church altogether and the the tragedy is not coming to church and abandoning their faith in god is much more consequential in the negative sense then if they had come to church and okay lord i was praying for this i was expecting you to do this but since it didn't happen i don't know why it didn't happen i will trust you i will give my life in your hand i will keep on coming to worship you i'll keep on putting my faith in you no matter what happens i will accept is it as your will for my life if they would take this a positive attitude their life would some day expect and uh, experience some miraculous things in life life will definitely be better with god than without god there is no doubt about it there was a discussion between about five six these intellectuals last week scientists philosophers the conclusion was some of them were skeptical sex skeptics also the conclusion was yes 
the irrefutable evidence or proof of God's existence is that absence of God is unthinkable. So that is the only irrefutable evidence for the existence of God is that if there is no God, life is unlivable. It's unbearable. And that was what uh, philosopher Nietzsche said. Since we have killed God, then now you have to expect the worst. He said, worst in terms of killing each other, worst in terms of natural disasters, because there is nothing that is now holding us together. Therefore, in Nietzsche's word, we have to invent God in order to be able to live. So this couple, their expectations were dashed and they must have turned into disappointment. But they kept believing God. They kept their responsibility. Because next we see the, the power of prayer here. Verse 8 to 11. Now, while he executed the priestess office before God in order of his division, according to the custom of the priestess office, his lot was to enter into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. Uh, usually, this kind of job was decided by casting a lot. There were many priests. So the Lord will go to certain division and then certain group and then certain family and then certain person. So Zachariah was a faithful man even though his life did not give him the reason to keep on believing this God. And he went to fulfill his responsibility. He could have said, I don't care about this God, you know. To live in this disgraceful life without children. Uh, I've been serving God for the whole of my life. What good is it that in this old age I should go to this temple? He could have easily said, like many Christians, they do. What is the use of going to church since I'm not getting what I wanted? But he went to the temple to burn incense. Verse 10, the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the hour of incense. An angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. You see, incense, incense, incense. There are three occasions, three, three times in this small passage. Uh, you go to Hindu temple, a Buddhist, mosque, a Buddhist monastery or Islamic mosque also, we see people burning incense. Why? The Bible also says incense is the symbol of prayer. In fact, in the book of Revelation, God is collecting the tears people are shedding in prayer. And he will one day take into account the tears that are shed in prayer. And he will wipe their tears. And the, the book of Revelation gives a picture, a, a kind of a metaphor that in front of the throne of God, there is an altar of incense from where the fragrance comes. And this fragrance is the prayers of the people. So incense burning was ancient custom of sending to God our prayers. The sadly, we have forgotten God, we have forgotten how to pray, and we keep on burning the incense as if the deity will be happy with the natural flavor or the aroma that comes out of burning the material. The reality is, incense alone is useless. It is a symbol of your prayer to God. So Zechariah is going into the temple to pray. And mystery of prayer is that something happened. What happened? Verse 11. An angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense. Now, Bible has, the biblical language is very deeply mystical at times. Why would not the angel stand on the left side of the uh, incense tem uh, altar? Why only the right side? Why only at the altar of incense? Why didn't he stand at the door? 
Why did he not stand on the corner or on the ceiling or somewhere else? The point is, your prayer and God's divine answers, they are closely connected. They are not separated. The sovereign hand of God can do anything he likes, but he doesn't do. He only does in accordance with our prayer. So if you're a praying person, you will come in touch with the divine reality. So you see, go, uh, you go and study the literature. Any person who spends time in prayer is always far better than a person who doesn't pray. It's a psychologically, scientifically proven material that any person, whether be a Buddhist or Muslim or Hindu or whatever, if there is a person who genuinely prays, his or her mental faculties are more uh, active and uh, productive than a person who is worried and fearful and filled with anxiety. But here, in the biblical sense of prayer, the mystery of prayer is that when you pray, you will never know when the divine supernatural act of God will take place. We, it's not in our hand. Our hand is only capable of lifting up and say, God, this is what I am expecting. Go, Lord, this is what I want to see in my life. Lord, this is what I want in my life. And a prayer, all that we can think about is what I can think or what I want and what I want to see, what I want to wish either for myself or for others, most likely Zechariah had to stop praying for himself. And he must be praying for, as a priest for the people of Israel. The people are also outside, so everybody cannot go into the temple those days. Only the priest can go. So this man is most likely not praying for himself, he is praying for the people. An angel appears. But the thing is this great message of joy comes now after many years of disappointment. Many years of sadness and sorrow. Many years of tear-filled eyes of prayer. Now in this old days, this message of great joy comes. Let us read verse 12. Zechariah was troubled when he saw him. Yeah, the, the word troubled is terrified, you know, the word. And fear fell upon him there, terrified. But the angel said to him, don't be afraid, Zacharias, because your request has been heard. Now, the reason I think uh, Zacharias was not praying for himself at this time is uh, that we'll follow. But most likely, he was praying for the people of Israel. But the request that was heard is not for the people of Israel. Not for others, but for himself. And most likely he stopped this prayer maybe 20, 30 years ago. Your prayer has been heard. A request, a prayer, same thing. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you shall call his name John. Last week I think I shared with you how I prayed for nine months about my SNC exam. For six months I prayed and I gave the exam and I, after giving exam I said to God, okay Lord, if I fail it's not your fault. I had three months I, I, I didn't pray about my result. I knew I, there's no point and I failed. So I was only praying, Lord, what do you want me to do? What is your will for my life? That's the only different prayer I was praying. Three months later when I went to the school I see my certificate and marks it and I'm passed. You, 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 I can't express the feeling. Uh, it was like as if I was flying. I didn't, I was not walking, I was flying from the school. I was not myself. So a prayer that I prayed for six months and there was no answer and then I had given up praying and three months later, nine months altogether, the answer comes and my world was shattered. I was no longer the same person. This was supposed to be the same experience with this old man. Let's continue. The message of great joy. His name shall be John. Verse 14. 
you will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth. Now, John the Baptist, where my wife is referring, this is his story. John will bring joy to you and also to others. But no, there is another mystery. Verse, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord and he will drink no wine nor strong drink. Wine is a symbol of joy. Even the Bible says a little bit of wine makes you very cheerful. Uh, why people drink? Because they want to forget their sorrow. Uh, wine means refreshment. So natural way of getting happiness, joy, some natural means. But this guy is, is going to be filled with joy. He's going to be uh, a child of joy to the parents and to other people. But this joy is not a natural joy. How? He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even from his mother's womb. In Ephesians, New Testament, chapter 5, verse 18. Don't get drunk, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. The secret of a Christian life is to be filled with the Spirit of God. So John will be a happy, joyful person and also he will bring joy to many other people. But the source of joy is not wine or natural, not the natural things. It is supernatural. It is divine grace of God. Even from his mother's womb he will fill and he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go before him in the spirit and power of Eliza to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to prepare a people prepared for the Lord. This is the Christmas story. The birth of John was for the purpose of preparing for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So he is known as the forerunner. The one who goes before the king. When the king is coming into the town, there used to be people who will go and announce the king is coming, king is coming. This is the ministry of John the Baptist. So he is going to prepare people ready to receive their king, their Lord, the Messiah. So this is a great message of joy. But uh, can you be joyful when you have been disappointed for a long time? Can you be happy when your time is long past gone? Look at here. Message of great joy to an unbelieving mind is no joy. Let us read. Verse 18. Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure of this? This is not... Uh, we will follow next Sunday Mary's question. There are fundamentally two different attitudes behind this asking. How can I be sure of this? For I am an old man and my wife is well advanced in it as if God doesn't know. The angel had no idea. The angel answered him, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God. I was sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. Jakariah, this is a great news. This is a joyful news. This is the prayer that you've been praying for your life when you are young. Behold, you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day that these things will happen because you didn't believe my words. The amazing thing about God is when you are sincere today, you are sincerely seeking his kingdom and his righteousness. And uh, you are sincerely seeking his will in your life. But then it didn't happen. So you become disappointed. And uh, you started to doubt God. You started to doubt yourself. But nevertheless, you did not abandon God. The point is, here the last phrase, even though you didn't believe, this will be fulfilled in proper time. Whatever we have been praying, God will fulfill it in time. Even though we may have sometime disbelieved or unbelieved, or we may have rejected 
the plan of God for our life. We may have said, okay, Lord, if you don't answer me, I'm going to give up. So don't uh, give up when things don't happen in your expected time. If you're barren at this time, continue to pray, continue to believe. Finally, let us conclude this passage. To the believing it is. It was a joyful experience. The people were waiting for Zechariah and they marveled that he, the word marvel is, they, it is a positive wonder. Something has happened inside the temple because this is not how uh, generally it is done. Other priests would come in time, but this guy didn't come in time. There must be something extraordinary happening inside. So they marveled that he delayed in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak to them. They perceived or they understood that he had seen a vision in the temple. People also had expectation. God, when will you send the deliverer? The people of Judah, they expected for the Messiah to come. They were wondering. There is a phrase in the Bible in those days, there was no vision and there was no word from the Lord. For 400 years, the Jewish people had no prophet, no vision. Nobody came. From the time of the uh, Nehemiah in the Old Testament until this time, it had been 400 years. They were under the Greeks. First, they were under the Persian, the Babylonians, and then the Greeks, and finally they were under Romans now, and they were expecting, God, when will you send your messenger? When will we see the deliverance? That was people's expectations, and Zechariah was most likely praying for them. And they thought, today something has happened. He must have seen a vision where he can't speak, because the angel said, you shall be mute. He continued to making signs to them and remained mute. When the days of his service were fulfilled, he departed to his house. I mean, that time his wife was not there. After these days, Elizabeth, his wife, conceived and she hid herself five months, saying, Thus has the Lord done to me in the days in which he looked at me to take away my reproach among people. The word reproach is disgrace. A barren woman, a childless woman is always looked down upon. Even if you see a childless woman in the morning, the, your whole day will be spoiled. So you have to turn back. It's like a black cat. You know, If a black cat crosses you when you go out, immediately we have this superstitious feeling. So same way in the village. If you see a lady who is not childbearing, is barren, immediately they will turn back. It's a, it's a bad luck. It's a disgrace. It's a reproach. You know, when I was a little child, like Samson says, maybe younger than that, I was born in a Mula Natchetra. So a child born at the Mula Natchetra, also similarly, is a cursed child. So early in the morning, if they see me, they will spit and they turn back. I still have a vivid memory at one time. Uh, it was a wheat, was just about this tall green uh, terrace were there. So along the terrace was a footpath and then you have to climb up. You cannot see who is on top and you no one can see the bottom. So you just climb the one terrace and that fellow was coming from the upper side. I was climbing up. As soon as he saw my face and he spat and he said, what a day this fellow destroyed my this is a reproach that Elizabeth is talking about. This is a disgrace. This is a sadness. And to this old lady, the message becomes a joyful message. Zachariah was maybe too much negative. He was too disappointed. He was simply doing his duty because he was a righteous man. He doesn't want to be a disobedient person. But in the heart, he had already closed his heart to God. But Elizabeth was so filled with the joy. For five months, she didn't even let anybody know. Because she wanted to make sure that it is true. 
in those days there is no ultrasound you know you you cannot go to the doctor you don't know she didn't have a menstrual cycle is long gone so she must be thinking maybe there is something sickness in my body so after 5 months she knew the baby began to move and she started to say lord has taken away my disgrace so my message today to us is that have expectations in life have dreams in life have a certain prayers in your life start praying for something and as tomorrow you become 70 80 90 years old how will you die at that time what do you want to see behind you have that expectation have a dream have a prayer and keep on praying even though right now you may be going through a barren landscape and be faithful to god trust him and you will never know when the angel will stand by the right side of the altar of incense or altar of your prayer keep praying be a person of prayer and add faith to that prayer even in the most disappointing situation don't give up on your faith keep trusting god keep praying keep believing and there will be a day when you will be surprised like elizabeth now she is going to be joyful next week will she how joyful she was and uh, of course zechariah must be repenting throughout these times he couldn't speak for nine long months and he's going to speak next week expect wonderful things in life you know there is a there is a kind of a positive affirmation people are, something wonderful is always on the verge of happening to me it makes you very good instead of something terrible is about to happen to me expect something positive something good be a positive thinking person but you're not simply a positive thinker you have a supernatural promise of god the altar of incense is going to the nostrils of god so to say god can smell your prayer he can smell your attitude he can smell your faith and he is not a god who will disappoint you everything is possible for him who believes let us pray